90 degrees with the heaters. I wouldn't do that. Um, thank you everybody for coming back. I wasn't sure if I had scared you away from the last one or not. I'm glad that this is still of interest to you. Um, I feel like the uh, first couple of lectures, the first few lectures, are a little bit painful because they're so math-heavy. Um, we'll get to a practical example, or at least what I think is a practical example, shortly. And then our next topic will be optimal tracking methods, and these are things that you can actually use, at least in some cases. So we're close to actually doing signal processing and something that, that you can work with, and we'll have more interesting examples around. But first, we've got to get through the, uh, the um, basic theory that a lot of this stuff is based on. So bear with me. Um, I'm, I'm not great at names, but I really want to try to learn all of your names. I know a lot of you, but if you don't mind, I'd like to um, just go through one more time and get everybody's names. That may help you also learn other students' names. So say it loud enough that, that not only I can hear you, but the other students can hear you as well. I think everybody <laughs> did memorize your name, though. Yeah. <laughs> if they didn't already know it. Read. Nathan. Elizabeth. Jimmy. Adam. Love Michael. Martina. Ed. Sam. Eric. Jeff. Scott. Okay, just right. Thanks, guys. And uh, you'll notice also we have uh, Dr. Eric Wan uh, sitting in on, on this lecture. He may sit in on occasion, and he'll be giving some guest lectures while I'm going to be away on travel later this time. So. Um, he's someone who knows a lot of the techniques that we're talking about in this class really well, and it's another great resource. Most of you are graduate students in electrical and computer engineering, so if you're working on things that are related to state space methods, um, Eric is just as capable of resource as I am for helping with these techniques and advising, and he's interested in getting to know the students better. I don't know if you had anything to add to that, uh, Eric. Just that, yeah, I'm fairly new to PSU, having come from OHSU and OGI. He's located downstairs in the uh, Suite 20. All right, and get started. Um, so I like to begin each lecture with just an overview of what we did last time and what we're going to be doing this time. So last time we spent half of the lecture period just going over the logistics of the course, um, how things are going to work, grading criteria, uh, what you can expect, how hard this is, how I'm teaching it in a weird way, um, all of those things. And then, should be course, not courses. And then we started on the introduction to estimation, and I um, provided a few thought experiments to get you thinking about other ways of characterizing what you're trying to estimate besides the all too common mean. I don't know how many of you have a background in, in estimation or doing estimation, but we're always thinking about the mean of the distribution. And particle filters, sort of the highlight of this class, are especially good for multimodal distributions. But when you have multimodal distributions, oftentimes the mean is not what you want to use to estimate the state. We talked about a few other possibilities um, during the last lecture and gave a few simple examples of cases where you might want to use a different estimator other than the mean. Do any of you have any, any questions from last time? Course logistics, how things are going to run, or on the content that we covered? Okay, well, not hearing any. <clears throat> so this time, um, I expect we'll finish up on this topic of estimation, and in particular, what I, what I hope you leave this lecture with is a, is a clear understanding of what Bayesian estimation is, and especially as compared to sort of the classic approach to estimation um, theory. And we'll talk about some advantages and disadvantages, and we'll conclude with an example that is very similar to what I'm hoping you'll come back with um, for the first homework assignment. I'm essentially asking you to come up with Another example, but doing the same steps that we go through in the final example of that set of notes. And then if we have time, we'll begin the first, um, the topic of the first <coughs> actual state space tracking methodology, which um, you know, I mentioned on the way in, actually, some of the, some of the ideas and equations um, I first saw and learned from Dr. Wan, so it's, uh, it's a little bit intimidating for me to have a roll with it. Um, 
I don't know if any of you uh, checked out the videos that we recorded last time, but I, I was quite pleased. It actually worked quite well, I thought. The audio quality isn't great, but it's on YouTube, and it's open actually to the world, and there are links on it to our website. I did, I think I mentioned this last time, I ordered a wireless Bluetooth microphone, and I'm going to try using it, so hopefully that will improve the audio quality. But if any of you want to review the lectures or... You know, if you're starting to fall asleep or daydream, as I often did as a student, um, that's a resource where you can go back and what did he say and, and be able to answer that question. So um, it's available, and I think it's clear enough. I, I think it works quite well. The, the only limitation that I feel like I'm having is being able to draw with this. I can't draw nearly as well as I can with a whiteboard marker or with my pen, but if I draw on the whiteboard, uh, then... Um, Obviously, you're not going to have that in the recording. I don't know how important that is, but we'll work that out as we go through. So if you have feedback on this, let me know. Um, the homework that is posted, you might have a look at it and just make sure all the questions are clear. I wrote it, honestly, fairly quickly. My intention is that you get a firm grasp of what a Bayesian estimation problem is like. And so if you've got questions, send them to me early so that I can post any, any responses or clarifications on the uh, forum page. Um, did anyone have any trouble signing up for an account and registering for the course? That go pretty smooth? Okay, and all of you should, if you want them, have a copy of the lecture notes, either in printed form or, uh, you know, I, I don't have any problem with you guys opening up your laptops so long as you're not they're playing games or doing something that distracts the people behind you. Um, but you're welcome to use those and just have the notes in electronic form if you like, whatever, whatever works best for you. And then there was a question about the reading from last time and... Uh, you know, I recommend reading chapter one. This gets pretty deep mathematically really quick, and it's because it's setting you up to, um, to be able to work with a common filter. And so there's a lot of linear algebra. There's a lot of dynamic linear systems stuff in there that isn't actually too important for quite a while in this course. We're not really going to need that until we get to the linear common filter. But nonetheless, it's good to start having a refresher of some of those concepts now. And we are working with some linear algebra and, and matrices, even though we're, we're working with a non-linear case and particle filters initially. Um, chapter 2 is a much more important chapter uh, to begin reading. It, it should be a review for all of you. Um, it's about the basics of probability and statistics and, and a little bit on estimation. And it's a good framework, especially for what we're covering right now. So that's the recommended reading for now. So again, any, any questions? All right, well, let me...